And I'd like to thank, uh, thank the Angus staff and the Angus community for the invitation to come here today. Um, the Angus program has definitely been a very big part of my life and um, the success I've enjoyed is, is largely attributed, attributed to it. So thank you for the opportunity. And I, I guess what I'd like to do today is provide a bit of context on the Angus Youth Program from my perspective. I've been out of the, the program now for about five or six years, so I'm reflecting back. But I also really hope for some of the younger people in the audience that I'm able to inspire you and, and perhaps uh, open a few doors and get you thinking about a few of these really good opportunities uh, that, that are available for you now and in the future. So, um, so for me, uh, yeah, li life's pretty good for me. Um, I, I have a role with the Victorian Department of Primary Industries, a senior role down there, and I work very closely with Meat and Livestock Australia. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, on the side, to, to keep myself grounded, and, and I think that's very important, I, my wife and I, Claire, we manage a small merino, uh, merino uh, flock uh, with ter terminal size over the top. So we don't have any cattle at the moment, but um, we do have a little daughter, Olivia, and so we're already talking about a, our, our 12 week old daughter, Olivia, and gee, we better get some heifers on the, on the ground so that she can grow up with some cattle and enjoy the, the same experiences that we did. Um, as well as working for the department and, uh, and also having that small merino flock that we manage, I renovate a, a federation home in Ballarat, uh, which, is, which is enjoyable. I love getting outside and doing that renovation. Um, and I am the father of Olivia, and I'm a very biased father of my first daughter who's 12 weeks old. I, I love, it, love it a bit. Uh, so my anger story started um, in about 1992. Um, I, I'm the dorky one on the left-hand side. Uh, my brother in the middle is now the New York banker, um, earning a lot of money, and my, my sister there has, a, has an absolutely adorable two-year-old daughter herself. Keeps her busy. But traditionally, many in my generation, my grand, grandparents had a... Paul Hereford started a commercial herd and Dad had Angus and that was a bit different and there was a bit of conflict. But um, I started off in the Angus Youth Program early and, and uh, really, um, oh, I missed a slide there, but for me, um, for me it, was, it was the commercial herd that really got me going and then more and more with Angus Youth I started at a small stud. I think the, the Angus Youth Program is phenomenal in the opportunities that it provides young people today and has done in the past. It's a program that has been going for over 30 years. And when we think about the opportunities that are there for young people, they're phenomenal and they're, they're broad. They run right through from the commercially focused field days and, and schools to the roundup to the overseas scholarships. And then you've, we've got things like the leadership clinic and a few of those things that I'll talk a bit more about in a minute. My Angus Youth Involvement, as I said, really started with that, with that, that small start in 92, 93. And I, I came up through the roundups and I attended that initial Holbrook roundup, which was a lot of fun. I sort of continued on with those roundup committees and I went through the, the Landmark Ambassador Program and I think that the way that Landmark has continued to uh, sponsor that Ambassador Program is a great credit to them. Uh, I studied at the University of New England and I, I, the, this, the support that I received from the Angus Australia staff while I was at uni was fantastic. I, um, I was up there almost sort of once a fortnight and I really got to know Bob Dent and Emma Weatherly really well and uh, they became great mentors for me and I learned a lot from them and they opened doors for me and it was really through working with Bob Dent that I sort of thought, this beef extension, this beef education area, this looks pretty exciting. I'd, maybe I'd like to have a career there. So that's how that kicked off. Um, it, 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 we sort of initiated a, a young beef producer information day and I realised that when I went for my first job, it was the opportunity that I had to run an extension day with Angus Australia that really got my foot in the door. So it was a, a great opportunity. Um, and a big part for me in, in those early stages was the Youth Management Committee and the way that the Angus Australia provide the opportunity for the youth program to largely drive itself and run itself and make, de make decisions. Um, that was a big part of, for me in developing some of my leadership skills. Um, so I'm only one person of many, many, many within this beef industry that's been affected by the Angus Youth Program. And I've just put a bit of a bit of a slide up here of some of the faces, just some of them that have been been involved. And you'll see Greg Chapel up there early on, Dick Way or Corey's here. Uh, there's many, many people. Um, these people are, are leaders within the industry, whether it be they're running their own seed stock business or large commercial business, or they might be like Jason Strong working in the working in Europe for Meat and Livestock Australia or Travis Parsi. Um, so I think that the Angus community can be pretty proud that you've had a pretty big impact on a lot of people within our industry and I know that I've, in, in preparing for this presentation I spoke with a number of those people and the, they certainly regard and thank the Angus community for, for, the, for the input you provided into their career. 
for me, a big part of my, my, my time with the Angus program was Michigan State University Scholarship. And it certainly has had a lasting impact on, on my career. Um, when we think about it, I went to the US and I went to the United Kingdom and I thought I was going to learn a whole lot about cattle, and I, and I did. I learned a lot about cattle. I can describe to you why this, this cow here has no ears, because it's North America, it's cold, and they got frozen off. Um, but I also studied at Michigan State University for a semester, and, and I was, it's very impressive. The United States Land Grant University uh, universities are, are phenomenal. They, just, they really put some fantastic resources into education. They really mentor their young people, and I, I took a lot out of my education in the United States that I, that I really uh, value these days. Um, I was very lucky. The Angus community continued to, to work with me and, and assist me while I was in the United States and the United Kingdom. I thank the, the Govans and Tamania, uh, the Govans and McFarland families at Tamania Angus. I was a, a poor uni student and they, they assisted me while I was there with, a, with some work, so that sort of kept me going. Um, a great part of being in the US was, was getting to know the US culture and the US society. And, here we are at a, at a, at a um, Spartans football match, uh, 100,000 people watching college football. Uh, we used to get about uh, a couple of hundred at college ourselves, but that was fantastic. And for me, this scholarship was as much about uh, experiencing the American way of life, experiencing a different, a different culture, seeing different points of view, as it was about what I learned about the beef industry. I think we need to remember that the, the, the investment that we make in the Australian Angus Youth Program also has big impacts overseas. So when we send Australian students overseas, our American partners also take value in the interactions and the collaboration that we have there. And I know Dr Dave Hawkins at Michigan State University has recently been put up for the uh, Saddle and Sirloin Portrait Award at Louisville in Kentucky. That's a, it's a very prestigious award that Dr Hawkins has been recognised for, for his con contribution to uh, young people in the American beef industry. And I know that, the, that his interactions with the Australian Angus Youth Program were a part of him uh, receiving that award. Uh, and the last one is there's always individuals. And so for my scholarship experience in the US, Jim Bruce, who was then with CMEX Genetics in the middle there, uh, Jim was the sponsor of the program. And I think we, we need to recognise those sponsors and, and thank them. Um, so my, my reflections on Angus Youth, um, I think that the Angus Youth Program, when I look at the, the colleagues and the people who have come through the Youth Program, I, I think it's, it really does develop some very good rounded individuals. And when I reflect back on what is it about Angus Youth that I think is particularly uh, positive for, for those people as, and myself, I think it's those things around the Angus Youth Program providing experiences in teamwork. Uh, it provides leadership opportunities. It gives a, gives young people in their early te in their late teens or early 20s the opportunities to make big decisions about a roundup. You know, they've got considerable budgets. It gives the opportunity to use initiative to get new ideas going that will work for young people. Um, I think the initiative driver here is a big one. I think it really helps people build a communication skills. There's been many young people in the Angus Youth Program who have come from central or western Queensland, western New South Wales. and we've actually seen them really develop their communication skills and their teamwork skills through involvement in the Angus Youth Program, through interacting with other people. And I think that there is a big part of the Angus Youth Program which is about providing young people or building accountability and responsibility with them. So I think these are very important aspects to the Angus Youth Program that sometimes we, we might overlook. Absolutely, the Angus Youth Program provides many lifelong friends and lifelong networks. And I know that at any Angus Youth wedding, you'll always find a number of Angus Youth people there. Uh, they're always very prominent. They're, the, they're lifelong friendships, that's for sure. And it's absolutely a great start in the beef industry. So for, for myself, the Angus Youth Program was very strong in the foundation of my career. Uh, in my, in, after leaving university, I worked largely in beef extension around genetics, uh, pastures and, and marketing programs. Um, and I really enjoyed some interaction with, with the beef CRC. And, one of, one of the great things I enjoyed working on a few years ago was a project where we were working with uh, 14 large beef producers in Victoria, Charlton Feedlot and Cargill Beef here at Wagga. And we were, had a supply chain project where we were really trying to demonstrate the value to every member of that supply chain when we shared feedback up and down that chain. And so we developed uh, a feedback template there which, which provided the cow-calf producer with a full range of carcass and feedlot feedback of how their animals performed in the supply chain. And that, that idea, that the project we actually came up with there actually came from my time in Michigan State. I sat in a room in Michigan State where we had feedlotters, cow-calf producers and processors in the room talking together. And I thought, gee, we just need to do this more in Australia. 
Um, so that, that was a great outcome for me and those producers that were involved. Um, I currently manage a statewide better beef project, which I'll talk a bit about in a moment, and I've been very fortunate that the DPI has given me some great career opportunities. Um, that small sheep enterprise is a big part of what I do. I love it. Um, but look, the, the, the big thing I guess I'll, I'll give a plug is the Better Beef Network. I'm very passionate about working with cow-calf producers and the seed stock industry um, to, to make sure that we are productive and profitable in the future. You know, we've got some very tough terms of trade that we, we, we have to combat in the beef industry, as most agricultural industries do. But I'm very keen that we have a sustainable and productive industry in the future. Uh, about uh, two and a half years ago, I established what's called the Better Beef Network in Victoria, which has an aim of increasing the productivity and profitability of Victorian beef businesses. We've got about 2,100 beef businesses around Victoria that participate. Um, and we wor I work very closely with the private sector. We've got about 40 odd private consultants that deliver research and development and extension messages to, to those 2,100 beef producers. We deliver things like beef schools, field days, conferences, phone seminars and webinars, uh, short courses and longer courses, educational type activities as well as, as, well as groups. And look, I guess that we, we've got some information that, that, that confirms that we do make a difference to the beef producers who engage the program. We do actually make real improvements in their on-farm productivity and profitability. So, so that, that, that's very satisfying for me. Um, so I, from, from, for Angus Youth, I guess, I, I want to leave that you have, as an Angus community and the Angus Youth program, had a very big impact in a lot of people's careers within the beef industry. When I spoke to a lot of those Angus Youth members, they, a number of the, or they all pretty well asked me to, to, to say a thank you and an acknowledgement from them to you for, the, for the, uh, the input and the support that you've given the Angus Youth Program over many years. And I thought one quote that I got from Hayley Morland pretty well summed it up. And Hayley said, you know, w w when we sit on interview panels now and we apl people apply for jobs, we've sort of, Hayley was saying, if an Angus Youth member applies for a job, they always get an interview because you know what, you'll always know they're going to be a quality applicant. And I think that's, that speaks pretty highly of the program. So I'll, I'll finish it up there. Um, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Mark. Um, here we go.